Welcome back, everyone. The August primaries are just around the corner. ABC 17 News will have candidates running in the 4th Congressional District in studio ahead of next month's election. Tonight, we have Taylor Burks, a Republican candidate in that 4th District, with us in studio tonight. Taylor, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Appreciate you sitting down here. Um, just to start things off, what should people know about you? Well, I'm a fifth generation farm kid, grew up down in the Ozarks here in Missouri, a cattle family, a 15 year Navy veteran. So like a lot of farm kids, I left the farm, joined the United States Navy, have served overseas a few times, uh, and then came back home uh, where my wife and I were raising our boys right here in Boone County. People in mid-Missouri might know me as the only Republican county clerk in Boone County history. Right. The rare Republican there in Boone County. That's government right. The rare Republican. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, so that's where I kind of wanted to start. As, as you said, many people watching this will probably remember you from your time there. The top election official really for right. Boone County. Um, big county government, big uh, election to handle all those times. Um, you have brought up on your website as well election integrity right. as being part of this. In fact, you tweeted today that it's on the ballot this November. Right. What do you mean by that? What What about election integrity is is on the ballot come from this midterm? Well, I don't think it's any surprise that people uh, are talking about election integrity, and I'm the only candidate for Congress in the country who's actually run an elections office. And so when we talk about restoring faith and confidence in what our elections look like, I think that means having somebody who has experience running elections. Election integrity comes up every single election. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're talking about it as much as we are because of President Trump, President Biden, and what happened in 2020. And so I say, let's move past 2020. Uh, let's recognize that there are always irregularities, always things that people are concerned about. But the only way to restore that integrity in our elections is to elect people uh, who can uh, understand what we're talking about, understanding what the election process means, and then propose and reform in a common sense way how we are protecting the foundation of this republic, which is the ballot box. Sure. What does that look like to you at the, at the federal level? Yeah. I mean, there are reasonable things. I think photo IDs are something that uh, most Americans understand and believe that we have to have a check like photo ID. The rest of the stuff that's being proposed in Washington, D.C. by Democrats right now is huge federal overreach and nationalization of elections. So we need people who can say, hey, this is a common sense process or reform, or hey, this is a, something that the federal government ought to be doing. Hmm. So uh, as far as the John, the, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, I know that's a big proposal from, from yeah. the Democrats right now. Um, I take it not on board with anything in there or you know or, most or of that's a, of it most of that. that's a huge federal overreach and that's a, a far left agenda that's been craft, uh, crammed into uh, HR1 is the John uh, Lewis Voting Rights Act and then the Senate version of that as well. Uh, none of that was negotiated with Republicans. And when we're talking about proposing reforms that all Americans can get behind, if it's a partisan power grab by Democrats, people aren't going to have faith and confidence in our elections. I'm for reforming our elections. I'm for a conversation. But it's got to be something that all Americans or most Americans can get behind. Because if we don't do that, it's going to continue to be this partisan uh, uh, debate back and forth on, on the integrity and transparency of, of elections. Something we did see some bipartisan movement on on an issue that is often very divided and very partisan is issues surrounding gun ownership mm -hmm. and, and guns in this country. Big bipartisan package moved its way through Congress, signed by President Biden recently. Um, I'm wondering your thoughts on that generally. The senator from Missouri, Roy Blunt, was mm -hmm. an instrumental part of crafting it and coming up with it. Uh, anything in there you like, or are you kind of a blanket no when it comes to this well, bipartisan, just bipartisan law? Sure. We talk about needing to change a lot of circumstances in this country around uh, some of the mass shootings that we sure. see. And so we talk about resources for schools, school resource officers, mm -hmm. law enforcement. We have a criminal justice problem in this country, mental health resources. All of those are reasonable things that we ought to be talking about. But then when we, got, when we get into the zone of red flag laws, where the federal government is incentivizing states to restrict or have the power to restrict gun ownership, that's really the red flag for me. And I would be against those sorts of things. I repeatedly talk on the campaign trail about how red flag laws are disproportionately used against veterans, people who've served in the military like me. And so when we have those components of any sort of uh, national conversation on how we address mass shootings, 
those are, those are problems for me. But by and large, uh, when it comes to gun control, we, we have to recognize this is a cultural problem. This is not a weapon problem. This is the fact that there are so many people who are struggling and we don't have the resources to accommodate or fix or address those issues. And that's really what any legislation should be about. Taylor Burks will be on your ballot this August for the 4th Congressional District. Um, I wish we had more time, Taylor. I really appreciate, though, you taking your time yeah. to sit down and talk to the voters about what to expect. Happy to be here, Lucas. Thank right. you. Now, be sure to watch ABC 17 at 6.30 all this week when we have three other candidates in the 4th District. We'll have Rick Bratton tomorrow. Mark Alford will sit down with us on Thursday. And Kalina Bruce in on Friday.